Russians can't find them and target them. With these new UAVs, this is something called Phoenix Ghost. We have not heard about this weapon until today. The Pentagon saying it was developed by the U.S. Air Force for Ukrainians' specific needs in this area. Similar to the Switchblade drone that they are sending, this means it is a drone, classified project because they're not telling us what it is, but possibly has both anti-tank, anti-personnel capabilities developed by the U.S. Air Force, again, for specific Ukrainian needs. And I emphasize this because when we looked up the company that the Pentagon said was developing this drone for Ukraine, it is a U.S. contractor that does work for U.S. Special Operations, specifically for covert U.S. Special Operations units. This can, may now be the second classified weapon system the U.S. is giving Ukraine. You'll recall a couple of weeks ago discussion about an unmanned boat that they were giving to Ukraine for their maritime needs. We have not heard anything about the specifics of that either. The Pentagon saying they simply for security reasons can't disclose any details about either of these systems. So it becomes very interesting. Ukraine has potentially two classified U.S. weapon systems now joining its inventory. John? Interesting to say the least. Barbara Starr, grateful for the live report from the Pentagon. Let's get some important insights now from our CNN military analyst, retired Lieutenant General Mark Hurtling. General Hurtling, grateful for your time today. Let's pick up where Barbara just left off, uh, talking about uh, a contractor used by U.S. Special Forces developing a drone for Ukraine's unique military needs on this battlefield. Uh, a, well, what does that tell you? What do you think the capabilities necessary would be? And you've spoken frequently about that the United States and the Allies are doing more than we know. Is this an example of that? It most certainly is an uh, example of that, John. And I'm not going to tell you anything I know about the drone because I don't know anything about it. But what I will tell you is when you're a combat leader and you're asking different folks for capabilities on the battlefield, there's a lot of people that will quickly deliver for you. And in this fight in the Donbass, what Ukraine is facing next is a requirement to be light on their feet, light from a standpoint of how much logistics tail they have so they can move very quickly, and a requirement for a lot of intelligence. So the kinds of equipment that you're seeing uh, being delivered now are providing those things as well as the ability to counter the massive uh, Russian artillery capability they have. So those are all key factors in this next phase of the operations along the routes of the Donbass. And that's going to play out here, the eastern Ukraine, Donetsk, Luhansk, playing out over here. I just want to bring up a list of this and have you help me as a former commander yourself. Uh, 72 big howitzers, 150 millimeters, 144,000 artillery rounds, 72 tactical vehicles, 121 of these Phoenix Ghost unmanned aerial systems, a field equipment and spare parts. When you heard the president today saying this is another $800 million package, in addition to an $800 million package that is still in the pipeline and more to come, uh, what specifically will these weapons do to help Ukraine in the fight? Well, the first one, John, the uh, howitzers, uh, again, those are towed artillery pieces. You'll see they're not in a vehicle. They're set right on the ground. But those plus the 144 rounds, very different than the Russian capability. This is a 155 millimeter howitzer. The, the Russians fire 152. So what you're seeing is the Ukrainians are possibly running out of ammunition for the kinds of former Soviet equipment they had, the Russian equipment. So now they're getting more Western technologically advanced capability with a lot of rounds to go with it. You can't fit uh, a 152 round from the Russian device into a 155 howitzer. It's just not possible. The tactical vehicles, again, geared toward what I was just talking about, moving quickly around the battlefield. Wheeled vehicles, more than likely, because they want to move fast in a quick reaction force to counter any kind of Russian incursion along that 300-mile front line. The tactical unmanned vehicles, or uh, uh, UAS systems, the, the drones as they were, those will give intelligence plus firepower whenever you see a breakthrough, which is what the Russians are going to attempt in the Donbass at multiple places. They are conducting what's called a reconnaissance in force right now to find, try and find holes in the Ukrainian lines. If the Russians were to find that, and so far they've been running into stiff Ukrainian resistance in every place they've been trying to break through, uh, it's because of the lightness of the Ukrainian force, their ability to move the battlefield and strike very quickly. 